Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So I've been using the Sony a7C for the last year and a half. And I picked this up for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's super compact. It's got the flip screen that I wanted. It's got the full frame sensor, of course, which gives you amazing image quality. So today I wanted to discuss my year and a half of use with the Sony a7C, some of the lenses and accessories that I bought for this, and whether I think it was worth upgrading from APS-C size sensor cameras to this. So the A7C is Sony's cheapest full frame camera. This costs around $1,600. Maybe you can get some deals on this right now where it might be slightly less, but it's around that price. And now these days due to chip shortages, I think the price might have gone up since the time I actually bought it. But this thing gives you a lot of features for that price. And if you look at full frame cameras like the A7 IV, it costs almost $1,000 more than this. In today's world, if you want a full frame camera, I would probably suggest looking at the a7 IV, but this has some unique advantages to it, especially because of its compact size and because of its feature set. So let's quickly go over those. This thing can shoot at 4K 30 frames a second, 1080p up to 120 frames a second. So the A6400, which is kind of equivalent to this in terms of APS-C size sensors, costs about a third as much, and it gives you the same specs, but you do get quite a bit of better image quality coming out of this, especially when it comes to low light situation, you'll get better quality coming out of full frame sensor. Also, full frame sensors can be wider, like the lenses that you get a 10 millimeter on a full frame camera is gonna look super wide compared to an APS-C size sensor. It's about a 1.5 time crop on APS-C, so this gives you quite a bit of a wider field of view if that's what you're looking for. In addition to that, you get a lot of quality of life benefits from the A7C. You get the larger battery size, this thing's battery life is absolutely amazing. Like I can shoot two full videos with this thing. I'm talking about like an hour and a half of 4K 30 frames a second footage on this. And it's gonna last me for two shoots. In terms of battery life, it's absolutely phenomenal. The A6400, for example, lasts for about 30, 40 minutes of 4K recording. So in terms of peace of mind, I don't have to carry around as many batteries when I take this. If I go out on a weekend or something like that, one battery is going to last me all the way. And if you're something like a wedding videographer or something, of course, you want the extra battery life that this gives you. In terms of ports, you have a lot more functionality. You've got a side loading SD card slot. You have to open the battery compartment in order to access your SD card slots in the A6400 line. And this is on the side, it makes it so much more convenient. You've got an audio out in this as well, so you can listen to what the camera is recording. You've got an HDMI port. This thing charges by USB-C, which is super convenient if that's all that you're carrying with you. And of course, you get a mic jack as well. So in terms of ports, this thing is pretty good. It doesn't have the dual card slots like the A7 IV, but for my work, you know, these videos that I shoot are not super precious. I can re-record at any time. I've never lost a single file on this camera. So I've never had an SD card fail on me ever. So I've never run into that issue. But if it's super sensitive that you have the footage for sure, then definitely you need a dual card slot camera and this doesn't have it. That's one of the limitations of this. The EVF on this is, I'd say mediocre. It's about the same as the A6000 camera, but if you look at some of the other full frame cameras like the A7 III, A7 IV, A7S 3 they all have much better viewfinders on them. This one's pretty low megapixel. When you're outside in the bright sunlight and when you're trying to look at this, it's serviceable, but it's not amazing. Flip screen is a game changer in terms of Sony cameras. This is one of the first full frames that came with a flip screen. And this was one of my biggest requests for Sony cameras. They had amazing image quality. They were super compact and small, but as a vlogger, I have to film myself. And if I can't see if I'm in focus or if the shots recording or if it's framed correctly, then it was really difficult for me. And I'd miss a lot of shots because of that. With the flip screen and most of the new Sony cameras and they're now coming with the flip screen, I think they've really solved that issue. Now holding the camera, the grip on it is a little bit small. So it's not the most comfortable to hold, but I'm willing to excuse that for its compact size. Like I really like the compact size of this. I can fit it into any bag, carrying it around is not super heavy. So for my kind of run and gun kind of shooting, this thing is absolutely amazing. I love the design of it too. I know that's not super important on cameras, but you know, this gray and black aesthetic to it. I think it's one of the best looking cameras on the market, honestly. I really love the look and feel of the camera, all the materials and stuff, the buttons, super nice. One place where this camera is slightly lacking is the amount of customizable buttons on the camera itself, but 
you know, you can get lenses with buttons on them, like this Sony 20 millimeter 1.8 FE lens has an extra button on this, which you can program to do whatever you need to do. So it's also got a dedicated, you know, manual and autofocus uh, toggle on it. So you've got extra functionality in the lens itself, which gives you some extra buttons. So I haven't really had the feeling that I'm missing out. There's three memory slots on here, so you can set things up. Like I have set up my camera to 4K 30 frames a second, 1080p at 120 frames a second. So those are the two modes that I use the most. Everything's dialed in for me. So I don't have to fuss with the camera menu too much. Even though this camera doesn't have as much functionality as some of the bigger cameras do, it's still very serviceable for me. So when it comes to the camera, I'm absolutely enjoying it. I do see the better image quality coming out of this versus my A6000, which I'm recording on right now, or my A6400, which I have as well, which I use as a B camera. Of course, lenses matter a lot. If you put a bad lens on here, versus put a really good lens on a APS-C camera, you're probably gonna get a better result from the APS-C camera. And also the speed of this camera is really cool. Turn it on and it's ready to shoot. Like, you know, some cameras take a while to boot up. This thing boots up nearly instantly. So for run and gun shooting, it's really, really nice. Not everything about the A7C is amazing. There are a few flaws. First of all, I would say the image stabilization is not the best in the business. So even though it does claim to have five axis image stabilization inside it, if you're using a very wide lens like this 20 millimeter, it's okay, but still not amazing. You need to use a lens with OSS in it or use a gimbal to get a really smooth image. But yeah, you can work around it by shooting at 120 frames a second and slowing it down in post so that you get a smoother shot if you want. But yeah, the inbuilt image stabilization, this is not amazing. Sony A7S III and the A7 IV have inbuilt active steady shot, which actually crops in slightly. We're using digital crop. Those cameras are able to like stabilize the image much better than this one. This thing has something called Catalyst Browse, which you can import these videos into your computer, run it through the algorithm, and the camera will use its tracking data and stabilize the shot for you very well. It gives an amazing result, but just the amount of time it takes to do that and the whole process of importing it into Catalyst, converting file by file, and then getting them into your editing software of choice is just too time consuming for it to be really worth it. They have that functionality directly inside the NLE, like Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut, then this thing would be a killer feature. But as it is right now, it's okay. Now let's talk about some accessories I got for the A7C. So first off, I got the Sony 20 millimeter 1.8 lens. This thing is amazing. It's not a G Master, but it's a G lens and it's got a couple of buttons on it. It's got aperture control, focus control wheel and uh, autofocus, manual focus toggle right on the side. So this thing is my daily lens. I always have this on the camera. Uh, this is what I shoot my vlogs with. This is what I shoot my talking head shots with. And this has just been amazing. The other lens I would highly recommend is this one. This is the Tamron 28 to 200, 2.8 to 5.6. So this thing is another great studio lens and outdoor lens, especially if you want to do some wildlife photography or something, you can get all the way out to 200. And one of the greatest features of this camera is that you can do APS-C crop mode. And that gives you, I'd say a 1.5X zoom directly digitally into your camera without losing quality. So you still get a 4K shot. And with that and this lens, I get up to a 300 millimeter shot, which allows you to get some amazing like wildlife shots or get something that's super far away in like crisp quality. So I really love this lens. Now this accessory is called the Sony ECM B1M microphone. And this thing is an amazing microphone. It's probably the best I've ever used. It's expensive, but it pairs with the Sony A7C amazingly. And if you're in the Sony ecosystem, I'd highly recommend you buy this. Now, if you look at this mic from the back, it's got a bunch of features on here. You can actually choose the pattern of the mic, whether it's going to just pick up from the front or all around. That's an amazing feature to have if you're a vlogger, because you can point the camera at somebody switch the mode and still be able to listen to your voice. It's got a digital and analog mode, so you can connect this to older cameras like the A6400, but the A7C will take a full digital signal 
coming out of this mic it's got noise cancellation it's got auto leveling as well it's really phenomenal mic and i would highly recommend it if you're looking to buy an a7c this thing is pricey at about 400 dollars or so but it's totally worth it especially because of its compact size and when i was watching some reviews of it people were talking about how the suspension is not good enough to, and it creates noise in the shot that's not been my experience i find it really nice to use so highly recommend this one all right guys so that's it about the a7c i would totally buy this again in a heartbeat i think it's totally worth the money especially if you want to do a long-term investment and you feel like you're going to spend a lot of time making videos or get deep into photography then of course the full frame does give you that additional quality and low light performance but keeping all that aside, if you're not ready to commit to like a two, three thousand dollar investment into camera gear, then I would still highly, highly recommend the A6400, which is still an amazing camera, has amazing performance, gives you similar specs to this camera for about a third of the cost. And this Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 lens, which I'm using right now, you can see the image quality still looks fantastic. And this whole setup will cost you probably, you know, a third of the cost of this setup. Do you get that much better quality spending twice as much, thrice as much? Definitely not. But there's some other quality of life improvements that you get with something like this, which can make it worth it for you. So in today's world, as a vlogger, if you're in the Sony ecosystem, like for full frame cameras, this is easily the most compact and versatile camera that you can get. The A7S III has amazing capabilities. You can do 4K 120 frames a second. On the A7 IV, you get, you know, 4K 60 frames a second. Yeah, sure, I'd love to have those features on something like the A7C, but for me, the body size of this and the weight and everything about it just is the perfect vlogging camera, like for YouTube. I don't think you can do much better than this. Anyway, guys, that's it for my video. If you liked it, hit that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to watch more videos like this, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.